when I say he froze, I mean myself. Friends, cause I can't redeem myself. Bye. Shalom, shalom. This is El Dayel from One Nation, One Power up here in Northern Arizona. Coming back to you again. You know, I don't come on here and just make videos to make videos. I'm the type of brother that like to sit back behind the scenes and really not be seen. I'm the most inclusive brother you ever want to meet in your life until the Spirit of the Most High comes in my life and puts me on a mission. He's putting me on a mission right now. And what I'm going to give you is strictly out of the word of the living God. The King James Version Bible. Come on out of here. New King James. Just King James Bible. Now, the Most High has been beating me up. Ever since my wife got a phone call, a text from a Gentile. Now, I'm going to make this short message today for all you Gentiles out there who are being mistreated and abused. Let's go for a little ride in our Bible and let's uh, put some things into perspective according to Scripture. Now, go with me right fast. Get your pen and your paper. All you Gentiles out there, get your pen and get your paper because the Most High is sick and tired of us treating the Gentiles like they dirt when they're keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, some of them better than us. But because they Gentiles and the Most High sent them to us, they're supposed to be under our care. Oh, come on out of here. They're supposed to be under our care. That's right. They are supposed to be under our care as the 12 tribes of Israel yet. And we're going to prove that according to scripture. But if you ain't never raised a family, if you never had children, and the Most High start sending foreigners or Gentiles to your camp, you ain't going to know how to treat them. Hello? You're not going to know how to treat them. If you've never been on a job in a place of management, where you had to manage different people, different diversities, how can you properly manage the children of Israel along with the Gentiles at the same time? Can't do it. So what do you do? You beat up on the Gentiles, and when you come to the knowledge that the Gentiles are supposed to be coming in, when they do come in, you treat them coldly. Give them the cold shoulder. Treat them like they got AIDS or something. Most High gave me this word today. He's sick and tired of this crap. Go with me right fast to Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. Get your pen and paper, Gentiles. And all you Israelites out there that want to learn something according to the scripture from a brother that's not going to try to twist it, I read it just like it is. I ain't going to try to twist nothing. Why? I'm not going to be twisted in hell. So I'm going to bring you the raw truth. Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. But the Lord said to him, I'm going to break all this down. But the Lord said to him, in the New Testament, who does the Bible call the Lord? Some people call him Jesus the Christ. Some people call him Yahuwah. Yah, 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 huh? Some people call him y Yeshua. Some people call him Yeshua. Whatever your flavor, he's going to have a new name when he come back anyway. Let's don't let that get in the way of what we're doing. So, in Acts 9 and 15, I would have to be crazy as hell to speak against what Christ is about to say. I would have to be an undercover agent to speak against what the black Messiah say out of his own mouth. Let's see what he says to Brother Paul. He says, but the Lord said to him, go. For he is a chosen vessel of mine 
to bear my name, to bear my name, to bear my name, to bear my name before the Gentiles, before the Gentiles, kings, kings, and the children of Israel. Stop right there. Did Christ just say what I think he said? Did Christ say that Paul was a chosen vessel and that I'm going to send him to the Gentiles, to the children of Israel, and to kings? Let me see. That's hard. There was somebody else that had this job in the earth. His name was King Solomon. Did uh, Bathsheba, who was a foreigner, and all the other kings of the nations come to King Solomon because he was the richest and wisest man on the earth? Did King Solomon minister unto them and share the name of the Most High to them? Or did he tell them to get the hell out? Why didn't he tell uh, uh, Bathsheba, uh, you know, you, uh, you, you, you ain't nothing but spittle, Bathsheba. You spittle. You less than nothing. <laughs> because God said that about all nations. That's what they are. Until they repent and come keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. They are no longer spittle. They become sons and daughters, and we're going to prove it according to Scripture. So I hope some of you Israelites out there that's young, new to this thing, I hope you get this because judgment about to fall. He says uh, in verse 15, got to read it again. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles. Kings and the children of Israel. Now, don't sit here and say that the children of Israel in this piece of passage is not talking about all 12 tribes because this is the same children of Israel over there in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 to 18, when Moses said, who shall I tell him sent me? He said, tell him, I am that I am sent me. Maybe that's why uh, brothers can't preach to the Gentiles because uh, they ain't following the right name. Come on out of here. Tell it like it is. Now, in Acts 9.15, Paul was commanded by Christ himself to go to the Gentiles, the kings of the earth, and the children of Israel, meaning all 12 tribes. Now, go with me for a ride right fast. Let's go for a ride. Now, we go all the way back in the Old Testament. Go with me to the book of Exodus. I told you, get your pen and your paper. Because that spirit of condemnation coming up off you Gentiles when you listen to this message. And for all you Israelites out there that think you all that in the bag of chips, you need to sit down and humble yourself and stop treating people like you God on earth already. Exodus. Told you this is a right on time message. Holy Spirit gave me this. Stop treating those Gentiles in your congregations like they are dirt. The most I said them his people. Come on out of here. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 28. This for you Gentiles. And when a stranger. Dwells with you. And wants to keep the Passover. To the Lord. Wait a minute. You want to try to. Don't try to tell me that this is strange to talk about Israelites. Because the Israelites was already keeping the Passover. Read it again. And when a stranger dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. We was already circumcised. And then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as a native of the land. And he shall be as a native of Jerusalem. And he shall be as a native of the land. And he shall be as a native of Jerusalem. Let's keep going. For no uncircumcised person shall eat it. So right here the Most High is saying in uh, Exodus chapter 12 and verse 48. That when uh, a stranger dwells with you. What that word dwell mean? Do they, don't that mean live? 
when a stranger lives with you and wants to keep the Passover. Let them get circumcised. Let's keep going. We're going for a ride. Get your pencils and get your paper. Because I'm tearing down that spirit of condemnation off you Gentiles today. Exodus 22 and 21. Let's go. You shall neither mistreat a stranger. This is the law. Exodus 22-21. You shall neither. Let me look at you when I read this. Because the most high is going to move after I, this video. You shall neither mistreat a stranger nor oppress him. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Exodus 22 and 21. Most I says, how can you now oppress a stranger, a Gentile, when you are oppressed? How can you take the same oppression that you're dealing with and then put it on them? Is that love or is that hate? That's another spirit, my brother, because the Most High is correcting today. Exodus 22 and 21. You shall neither mistreat a stranger nor oppress him. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I wonder who were strangers in the land of Egypt. Was it the 12 tribes of Israel? You can't say that this was an Israelite stranger. Let's keep going. Oh, we got some scripts. Let's keep going. Come on out of here. Leviticus. Let's go to the big boy text. Leviticus 18 and 26. Get your pencil and paper, Gentiles. You're going to get set free today from under that condemnation, from being mistreated. Come on out of here. Leviticus 18 and 26. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments. And shall not commit any of these abominations, either any of your own nation or any stranger who dwells among you. We need to read that again. Leviticus 18 and 26. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations. Speaking of the sexual immoral laws, you shall need therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any, commit any of these abominations, either any of your own nation or any stranger who dwells or lives among you. Leviticus 18 and 26. Let's stay in Leviticus, 1933. And I'll read 34 with it. Leviticus, 1933. And if a stranger dwells with you, let's, let's read that again. And if a stranger dwells or lives with you in your land, you shall not mistreat him. Come on out of here. Leviticus 19 and 33, the Most High is repeating it all over again. He's telling the Israelites, don't be mistreating the strangers. But today, we got another spirit out there. They cussing the strangers out. When the Most High ordered us, you see, this is how you know if you got the right spirit or not. If you got the spirit of Christ, you're going to follow and say yes and amen. I'm going to do what you say, Most High. I'm not going to go out here and try to establish my own doctrine. Leviticus 19 and 33. And if a stranger dwells with you, that means lives with you in your land, you shall not mistreat him. Verse 34. The stranger who dwells among you shall be to you as one born among you, and you shall love him as yourself. You shall love him as yourself, the Gentile that's in your ministry, that's a part of your ministries. Why are you mistreating them? That's right. The Most High just gave me a word. That's right. Fresh from the Holy Ghost. Why are you mistreating them? You are breaking the law. You are in sin when you mistreat Gentiles. 
We're going over it again. Leviticus 19 and 33 to 34. I know some of you out there that listen to some of them brothers with them old false doctrines and know how to twist scripture a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm just going to read the Bible just as it reads. And we're going to find out who really following Christ and who following Satan. Verse 33 and 34. And if a stranger dwells with you in your land, I wonder what land that is. For all you out there talking about there was never no strangers among us. Leviticus 19 and 33. And if a stranger dwells with you in your land, you shall not mistreat him. Verse 34. The stranger who dwells among you shall be to you as one born among you and you shall love him as yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Why did he put his name at the end of it? He signed it. The most I signed is I am the Lord your God. He signed it. He put a signature behind what he said. Now, after this video, keep doing what you're doing. Let's see if the judgment of the most high run down like water. He's sick of this mess. We can't even follow the, the word of God without establishing our own doctrines. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19. This is for you Gentiles and for you Israelites that got a piece of that false doctrine in you. We're going to rip it out. Deuteronomy 10 and 19. Therefore, love the stranger. What? Therefore, love the stranger. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. The most high repeating it all over again. Why you got to repeat something all over again? Because you know us Israelites are stiff-necked and hard-hearted and hard-headed. Therefore, love the stranger. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Verse 20. You shall fear the Lord your God. Why did he put fear right behind verse 19? He threatening you. Let's read it again. Therefore, love the stranger, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him, and to him you shall hold fast and take oaths in his name. See, I took an oath to his name to preach exactly as his word is written. Not adding one word, not taking away one word. Because when you do that, you bring a curse on yourself, and at the end, you will be in the lake with the snake. Stay in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 12 and 13. Get your pen and paper, Gentiles. That spirit of condemnation coming off today. Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 12 and 13. Gather the people together, men and women, and little ones. He said, get everybody. Call them all. Get the man. Get the woman. Call the babies. And the stranger who is within your gates. Where is this stranger at? This stranger ain't out there picking cotton, is he? Uh-oh. This stranger ain't out there uh, a slave. He said, within your gates. Within your gates. Within your gates. We're going to hit them gates in a minute. Because I, when a stranger came in among us, they live within our gates. That they may hear and that they may learn to fear the Lord your God and carefully observe all the words of this law. Stop. I got to read that again real slow for you. I know that went over some of your heads. We dealing with the stranger. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 12. Gather the people together, men and women, and little ones, and the stranger who is within your gates, that they may hear and that they may learn to fear the Lord your God and carefully observe all the words of this law. The most I said, call the stranger, because I want the stranger to also fear me. I want the stranger to also keep my law, statutes, and commandments. Let's keep going. It gets better. Verse 13. And that their children. Who have not known it. And that the Gentiles children. 
who have not known my name, and that the children of the Gentiles who have not known my Passover, who have not known my Feast of Unleavened Bread, who have not known my Feast of Tabernacles, who have not known my Holy Name, who have not known we follow the sun and not the moon, who have not known who I am, call the Gentiles so they can get their children so they can learn who I am. Verse 13, and that their children who have not known it may hear and learn and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land which you crossed the Jordan to possess. It don't get more. How are you going to get around that? How are you going to get around Deuteronomy 30, 12 and 13? When the Most High said he want to teach the strangers, the Gentiles also. Let's keep going. I'm so tired of these games these brothers playing with the word of God. God tired of it. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 32 and 33. Second Chronicles, Gentiles, get your pencil and your paper. And all you Israelites out there that's been treating these Gentiles, most I put a word in my mind. He said, you're going to be judged for it. You will give an account for not loving the stranger as yourself. Second Chronicles 6 and 32. Moreover, concerning a foreigner, Moreover, 2 Chronicles 6 and 32. Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is not of your people of Israel. What? 2 Chronicles 6 and 32. See, the Most High knew this, this was coming. Most High already knew it was coming. He already knew what kind of people we had among us. That's right. So he put it in the script. These words shall judge you at the last day. I'm going to say that again. These words shall judge you in the last day. Second Chronicles 6 and 32 and 33. Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is not of your people Israel. How you get around that? The foreigner, the stranger, the Gentile, who is not of your people Israel, who, who don't belong to the 12 tribes who don't belong to Judah, who don't belong to Ephraim, who don't belong to Madison, huh? come on out of here, who don't belong to Asha. Let's read it again. Second Chronicles 6 and 32. Some people's heads are hard. Let me hit you in the head with it again. Moreover, concerning a foreigner, a Gentile, a stranger, who is not of your people, Israel, how you going to say this is an Israelite who is not of your people Israel? Let me say that again. Who is not of your people Israel? Who is not of your people Israel? Who is not of your people Israel? Who is not of your people? I can make a song out of that. Who is not of your people Israel? Who is not of your people Israel? Let's keep going. But has come from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm, when they come and pray in this temple, when they come and pray in this temple, and when they come and pray in this temple, verse 33, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you. That all peoples of the earth, that what? That all peoples of the earth, this Solomon's prayer, that all peoples of the earth, no, just the 12 tribes, that all peoples of the earth, no, just Judah, that all peoples of the earth, no, just Issachar, that all people of the earth, oh, hold on, just Benjamin, that all people of the earth, that all people of the earth, that all people of the earth come on out of here. That all people of the earth may know your name and fear you. That's everybody on the earth may know your name and fear you, the one true living God. 
<sighs> it gets better. Let's keep going. As do your people, Israel. As do your people, Israel. As do your people, Israel. As do Benjamin Levi. As do Manasseh. As do your people, Israel. As do your people, Israel. I don't know what these brothers been on. It must be smoking something. And that they may know that this temple which I have built is called by your name. That is 2 Chronicles 6 and 32. Let's keep going. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better. Go with me to Isaiah 56. Talking to you Gentiles out there. That spirit of condemnation. The way these brothers been treating you and beating you up and putting you down and kicking you to the curb. Last one. Huh? Come on. Last one to know when the feast is going to be. Last one to know what's going on. Most high tired of that. He said, love the stranger as yourself. That's right. Isaiah 56 and 3. Let's begin at 3. We go all the way down to 8. And then we're going to touch on them gates again. Remember, the stranger lived within our gates. They lived within our gates. I'm going to say that again. They lived within our gates. And then I'm going to give you a breakdown today that's free. I don't charge for this. That's right. Store up my treasures in heaven. Isaiah 56, and I'm going to read. It's going to just talk to you. Beginning at verse 3. 3 through 8. Do not let the sun. This whole chapter talking about salvation to the Gentile. Come on. Verse 3. Do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord speak saying, the Lord has utterly separated me from his people. This is a command to all you Gentiles out there who being made to feel like you nothing. The Most High already knew that was coming. He already knew it. He already seen it. So he gave you this word to encourage you. He telling you, don't be feeling like you're not important. Don't be feeling like you don't have a part in the kingdom. Because we're going to break this thing down. And we're going to let the word speak for itself. Now over in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1 and 2. It talks about we're going to possess the strangers. That's right. And we're going to take them to their place. But we're going to find out what place that is according to scripture. Over in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1 and 2. Do it say something about handmaids and servants? It says hand, we're going to possess them for handmaids and servants, right? Now let me ask you a question. You know, I'm, I'm over 50 years old. But you know, I want to ask you a question. Over in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1 and 2. It says we're going to possess them as handmaids and servants. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Did that say we're going to possess them as cotton pickers? Why did it say we're going to, they're going to be in the field picking cotton? In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Because if you know anything about slavery, you know that the servant and the handmaid lived in the big house. That's too deep for some of you out there because you feel with hate. Now, I'm going to help you once again. And we're going to prove it according to Scripture. Now, the servant and the handmaid are in the big house. They, they, the servant is there to serve Massa his drink. The servant is there to serve Massa and to make sure Massa got what he needs. That's what that's all about. Do you hear me out there? And the handmaid, what's she doing? She's serving the, the women of Zion. But she's in the house. A servant and a handmaid don't work in the field. We're going to prove that. Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 3. Do not let the son of the foreigner who had joined himself to the Lord speak. Said Most I said, don't let this come out your mouth. Don't let it even enter your mind. Say, the Lord has utterly separated me from his people. God has separated me from his people, and I'm nobody. 
And I'm nothing. God told you ahead of time, don't even talk like that. Let's keep going. Nor let the eunuch say, here, I am a dry tree. I'm cut off from God. For thus says the Lord to the eunuch who keeps my Sabbaths. For thus says the Lord to the eunuch that keeps my Sabbaths. Let me say that again. Read my lips. For thus says the Lord to the eunuch that keeps my Sabbaths. And choose what pleases me. And hold fast my covenant to the unit that chooses what pleases me a higher. And hold fast my covenant even to them. 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 I'm trying to get this word through your head, Gentile. Even to them will I give in my house. What he said? In my house. Not the cotton field. In my house. I need to say that again. In my house. The word don't say outside the house. In my house. Because these are obedient foreigners. These are obedient Gentiles. And because you're keeping this covenant, because you're keeping this Sabbath, because you're keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments, the Most High said he's going to give you a place in his house. In his house. In his house. Let's keep going. And within my walls, a place and a name. And within my walls. And within. Anybody know what within is? You know what without me, right? Within. And within my walls. And within my walls. This is where the servant and the handmaid is going to be. Within my walls. Within my walls. Within my walls. Let's keep going. And within my walls, a place and a name. That's that new name? He going to give the unit a new name? Written on a stone that no man know? Let's keep going. Better than that of sons and daughters. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we got a problem. The Most High just promised the unit that because he has chose what pleases him and hold fast to his covenant, that he's going to give him a place in his house and, and within his walls, and his name is going to be better than that of sons and daughters. Some Gentiles don't have a name better than Judah. That's what the word said. See, I stick with the word. Let's keep going. I will give them an everlasting name. An everlasting name. Why would you need an everlasting name if you ain't going to live forever? <sighs> that shall not be cut off. Verse 6. Also, the son of the foreigner, a hey, Gentiles, also the son of the foreigner, verse 6, also the son of the foreigner, the foreigner, the foreigner, who joined themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, to be his servants, to be his servants to be his servants to be his servants to be a highest servants to be a highest servants to be a highest servant. I'm trying to get this through your head, Gentiles. To be a highest servants, everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant. Even them, even them, I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. In my house of prayer. In my house of 
prayer. In my house of prayer. In my house of prayer. Let's keep going. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel says, yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. Now, stop right there. The Most High says, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Now, you might be saying to yourself right now, hold on, wait a minute, brother. Uh, that got to be talking about the Israelites. God says, yet will I gather others. Read your Bible, folks. Why did he say in my house and in my walls? Let, let's go to Revelations chapter 22, verse 14. Go with me. Revelations 22, 14. Revelations 22, 14. I'm giving you the proper breakdown. That most I say in his house, it shall be called a house of prayer. That if the unit chooses those things that pleases him, we know that's the law, statutes, and commandments, and keep the Sabbath from polluting it. He's going to give him a name better than that of sons and daughters. And he's going to be a servant to the Most High. Let's keep reading. Revelation 22, 14. The Bible speaks for itself. Ready? Revelation 22, 14. Remember those gates that the strangers lived in with our ancestors over in the book of Deuteronomy, over in the book of Leviticus. The strangers lived among us, meaning they lived in our gates. Let's see if anything changed with the new kingdom coming to the earth. Revelations 22, 14. Blessed are those. Now I understand why I say those. And don't just say the 12 tribes. Because if it just said the 12 tribes here, then it would just nullify everything we just went over. But it don't. It said those. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right, have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Stop. Revelation 22, 14 says, Blessed are those that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life that they may enter in through the gates into the city. You know, that's hard. What city is he talking about? What city is spoken of in Revelation 21 and 22? Is this New Jerusalem? The Most High is saying, if you keep in my laws, my statutes, and my commandments, you're going to have a right to the tree of life and that you shall go and be able to walk through the gates into the city. Why? Because there's going to be an angel standing there. To keep out all things that offend. Now let's see who on the outside of the city. Let's see if Isaiah chapter 14 verse 1 and 2. Which said we shall possess them in the land of the Lord. For servants and handmaidens. Servants and handmaidens. Why are we going to possess them as servants and handmaidens? Because they're going to be in the house. These are. Gentiles, foreigners, strangers that have repented, been baptized, and keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments of the Most High right now. You're going to be in the house. The Most High promised you, according to Scripture, you're going to be in the house. How can you be a servant and be outside? No, that's a slave that's out there picking cotton. That's not a servant. A uh, handmaid. Handmaids don't work in the, in the cotton field. Let's prove it. We're going to read 14 and we're going to read 15. Some people are going to qualify to go through the gates into the city and eat of the tree of life. Jew 
and Gentile. Acts 9, 15, Jew and Gentile. Why? Gentiles going to be handmaids and servants. Where? Inside of the city, according to scripture. Let's read it again. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. But outside, but outside, we in verse uh, 15, but outside. Now we're going to see who in the cotton fields. Now we're going to see who's sheer crop. But outside, outside, anybody know the difference between inside and outside? But outside are dogs, dogs. Spoken of over there in the book of Psalms when the, when the, when the psalmist wrote that dogs can pass Christ. They pierced him in his hands and his feet. Dogs. Who was that? Unsaved heathen. God called them dogs. This is now your unsaved heathen. But outside are dogs, people that don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. People that don't keep the Passover. People that don't keep the Feast of Unleavened. Outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loves and practices a lot. Stop. Didn't God tell us in Revelation 18 and 4, be ye separate and come out from among them? Now, why would God take a Gentile that's today sold out, praying like we don't pray, fasting like we don't fast, keeping the commandments of the Most High God, now he's going to take them and put them without the city, with dogs, sexual immoral, whoremongers, liars, is our God just or unjust? Is he working right now to separate us from the dogs? Is he working right now to separate us from whoremongers? Is he working right now to separate us from the sexually immoral? Well, why then would he turn around and put a righteous Gentile in the midst of wickedness? He ain't going to do it. Why? Because it's going against his word. There you have it, Gentiles. You got the truth. You need to be made free. That's right. From the bondage of you thinking you're going to be out there with the dogs. No, these dogs, gonna, they gonna, we're going to rule them with a rod of iron. We're going to beat the hell out of these dogs if they don't pick that cotton. Who else? Who, who else going to be outside the city? Sorcerers. I can't wait to get my hands on the sorcerer. They're going to pick the hell out of them peas. Get over there, sorcerer. And pick them damn peas. That's right. Who else? Sexually immoral. Oh, put them pants. Pull your pants up. Pick them damn peas. Sexually immoral. What the hell wrong with you? You, I, I come back here tomorrow. You going into the lake with the snake? <laughs> the Gentiles that have separated themselves to the and come to the Most High. We're going back to Isaiah fifty-six. Holy Spirit says some of your brains are spinning right now. It should be. I read the Bible to you. <laughs> Isaiah 56 and 3. Do not let the son of the foreigner. Hello, Gentile. Don't let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord speak. Most High said, you better not even be caught saying this. Saying. The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. I want to repent, but I'm separated. I want to get baptized, but I'm separated. I, 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 don't even speak it. The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuch say, here I am a dry tree. Meaning he, he, connect, he disconnected spiritually from God. He dried up. Most I say, don't even say that. For thus says the Lord. For who? Thus says the Most High. That's why I don't get in the way of the scriptures. He's saying something. If I go against what he's saying right now, I'm going into the lake with the snake. 
For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keeps my Sabbaths and chooses what pleases me, those laws, statutes, and commandments, and hold fast my covenant, even to them, even to them, I will give in my house. What did he say? In my house. He didn't say out there in the cotton field. He said in my house. What house? New Jerusalem. That's the most highest house that's coming down to the earth. In my house. In my house. Servants and handmaids. Where? In my house. Commander, commandment keepers. In my house. Huh? Come on out of here. Sabbath keepers. In my house. And within my walls, a place and a name. And within my walls, a place and a name. And within my walls, a place. And within my walls, a place and a name. And within my walls, and within my walls, and within my walls, a place and a name. Not outside the wall. Within my walls, a place and a name. Stop. I don't been to many rich folks' houses. And I always like to go when I go to the rich folks' house, their house is already decked out. I always say, let me see the maid's quarters. <laughs> let me see where the butler live. Where they live. Do the rich people got servants and handmaidens on their property? Do they live? Do they have their own quarters? That's what the most high is saying. A place within my walls. Within my this is what the scriptures say. Don't get mad with me. Get mad with the most high. Even, verse 5. Even to them I will give in my house. In my house. And within my walls a place and a name. Oh, he going to give them a place within the world? That must be a place to live. Better than that of sons and of daughters. Uh oh, that's a shame. That's a shame when a, a unit going to get a name better than sons and daughters because the unit is sold out. He ain't sneaking around in secret sin. He's sold out. So the most I promise him, he's going to give him a name better than sons and daughters. So for all you Israelites riding on your high horse right now, most High saying, uh-oh, you might be getting pushed out the way. You don't get your act right. There's going to be some Gentiles in there going to have your seat. Come on out of here. And I will give them an everlasting name, meaning they're going to live forever, that shall not be cut off. Verse 6, also, the son of the foreigner who joined themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, they go Isaiah 14, 1 and 2 right there, and to be his highest servants, everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. How many times do the Most High got to keep telling us in his house? See, he know we as Israelites got hard damn heads. Because if he would have said it once, you would have blew it off. But he would have said it three or four times. In my house. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted. It don't make no difference how these Israelites out here feel. They're going to be, if you can't take a Gentile now coming into the truth, what the hell are you going to look like when they up there at the altar in the kingdom and the Most High is enjoying their prayer? That's why you ain't going. You're going to be standing back with a sour, stupid look on your face, mad as hell because a Gentile is in there. But the most I said they will be. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Hold your breath. <laughs> hold, hold your breath. Maybe something
nothing will change. <laughs> oh man, these brothers got doctors out there that just for the dogs. <laughs> This is your Bible, folks. Read it. Stop letting people tickle your ears. Hear what thus says the Lord. Verse 6. Also the son of the foreigner who had joined themselves to the Lord to serve him. You ain't serving no Israelites on this earth. You serving the Lord. And to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. You're not our servants, Gentiles. You, you the most high servants. That's who you are right now. You, you keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. You keeping the Sabbath from defiling. You are the most high servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain. Where is that? Jerusalem? And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Them Gentiles are going to be jumping up and down happy as hell to serve. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Who is he talking about right here, all nations? All of the foreigners that's coming to this truth right now. Because the dog's going to be outside. This ain't talking about the dogs. This ain't talking about the sword, sorcerers. This ain't talking about the sexually immoral. They're going to be outside the gate. They ain't going to get a chance to come into the gate. They better not even get too close to the gate. Might be electrified. <laughs> but you Gentiles that have separated yourself in keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, you need to read Isaiah 56, 3 through 8. Over in Revelation 22, 14, and 15, the Most High promise that uh, blessed are those that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life, that they may enter in through the gates. So if you're keeping the commandments, the laws, and the statutes, Jew or Gentile, you're going into the gates. How can you serve us if you're outside with the dogs and the sexually immoral and the lies and the impure and the damn homeowners? How can you serve me? You won't be hanging out with trash. Oh, come on out of here. There'll be one more, won't be no more hanging out with trash when the most high come back. You're gonna hang out with the righteous. Where? In his gates. Now go with me to the last verse. Ezekiel 14 and 7. Most high says, Stop mistreating the stranger. You were a stranger in the land of Egypt. Who do you think you are? Ezekiel 14, starting at verse 7. Now this is a prophetic word that the Most High gave to his people. Come on out of here. Let's read it. Ezekiel 14 and 7. For anyone of the house of Israel or of the strangers, do I need to read that again? This is a warning from the Most High out of the mouth of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 14 and 7. For anyone of the house of Israel or the stranger who dwell in Israel, who dwell where? So the strangers was living in Israel too? You better come on out of here. Stop believing these false doctrines. Read your Bible, folks. For anyone of the house of Israel, meaning all 12 tribes, or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who separates himself from me and sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity. When you mistreat the Gentiles, you're stumbling into iniquity. Because you're going against the law of the Most High to love thy stranger as yourself. Then comes to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him 
by myself. Verse 8. I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So after I kick their ass, oh, excuse me. <laughs> after I kick their butt, then you shall know that I am the Most High. <laughs> Verse 9. And if the prophet is induced to speak anything, I, the Lord, have induced that prophet. I mean, he tired of that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people Israel. And they shall bear their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be the same as the punishment of one who inquired. Moses I said, just because you're a leader, I will beat your, you know what, just like I do, a lay member. Come on out of here. Most I say, I'm done with you guys falsely uh, teaching this word against the Gentiles, the foreigners, the strangers. Solomon lifted up his hands in heaven and prayed for him. And if that was the case, watch this. When Solomon was king, did everybody on the earth come to hear his wisdom? I, what would you think Solomon was telling him? About his uh, Lamborghini. <laughs> you think he was telling them about uh, the big house? Solomon was telling them and teaching them about the Most High, Ahia, and his name. Because the Most High wanted his name to go to the four corners of the earth. Do you hear me out there? When, in Acts 9.15, Paul picks up the same mantle that Solomon had when Solomon was ruling the earth. He had to go to the Gentiles, he had to go to the kings, and he had to go to the children of Israel. See how much things he must he had to suffer? God said, he got to see how much he got to suffer for my name's sake. It ain't that, it, people say, oh, it's hard to minister to the uh, 12 tribes of Israel, the children of Israel. Try ministering to kings. <laughs> and try ministering to Gentiles who hate your guts. <laughs> And won't you dead? Paul had to minister to the kings, the Gentiles, and the children of Israel. So I'm here today, Acts 9 15. Read it for yourself out of the mouth of the black Messiah Christ himself. Stop treating them Gentiles like they are uh, trash or garbage, and they're going to be working out there in the cotton fields. Give me a scripture that tells me that they're going to be picking cotton. The, I'm talking about the Gentiles that are keeping the laws, statutes, and the commandments of the Most High. The Most High promised them over in uh, Isaiah 56, 3 through 8, that he's going to give them a name even better than that of sons and daughters. I know that hurt, don't it? it it's because they are sold out. That's right. They're not playing games. They're not still going to mama's old church. They're not still hanging out with the friends. They are sold out, and it's a shame that the Gentiles right now are living better than us Israelites. Put that in your cup of noodle and stir. So the Most High saying, stop beating up on the Gentiles. He's trying to bring them folks in. And the only way they're going to come in, the only way they're going to come in is through you. But you're going to have to love them. You're going to have to respect them. Do you hear me? You're going to have to learn to respect the Gentiles. I'm going to read Exodus 22 and 21 again. And we're going to get out of here. I hope somebody out there got something out of this. If not, it ain't for you. Exodus 22 and 21. You shall neither mistreat a stranger nor oppress him. You shall neither mistreat a stranger nor oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Let's hit another one. Exodus 23 and 9. 
Also, you shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the heart of a stranger, because you were strangers in the land of Egypt. It's the most high talking to us. He's saying, you guys understand what oppression is. Why would you turn right around and oppress somebody else? Huh? That's what the most high is saying. Why would you turn around and oppress somebody else after experiencing nothing but oppression? Come on out of here. Leviticus 19 and 33. 